Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video for all of you that asked about how do you configure a HERE 4 GPS, one of the newer GPSs, with something like a Cube Pilot and Mission Planner. Now I was lucky enough to be up with Ben at 3DXR and he had one of the HERE 4 units. This is a really advanced GPS with lots of other sensors on board. It's essentially a flight controller on its own. And I had two questions about it really. One was how would you configure something like that with a cube pilot to act as a GPS and use all those extra sensors, but also how do you configure it to be a flight controller in its own right? And in this video, we're going to talk about the first of those two questions. Big thank you to Ben at 3DXR as always for sparing the time to make these videos and share his information and knowledge. He's a very knowledgeable chap and his time is very precious. So I really appreciate the fact that he sit down and kind of explain this stuff in the level of detail that he does and make it easy to understand. One of the things that's going to be covered in this video is how to set up and configure a CAN bus GPS. Now that's something that I've done in many of the Ardu Pilot Q Pilot builds on the channel, as well using Pixhawk style controllers and Matex style controllers as well. CAN bus is becoming a much more standard way to connect peripherals because using only four wires, you can have many, many connections throughout the model with various different sensors and have them all connected together. The latest generation of peripherals that are coming out that support CAN bus have something called AP Perif, Ardu Pilot Peripheral, actually installed on it, which means they're essentially their own little flight controller. And it means that you can access them and change the way that they behave and change their configuration. And that again is all done through a mini menu in Mission Planner. But let me hand over to Ben, the expert, to actually show you how to do it. Again, this is not only useful for the here for setup, but in terms of how how all the CAN bus stuff is done. If you've been directed here by me with a question about that, the first part of this setup is going to show you how to do that bit. Okay, so we're going to show you the basic setup of a HERE 4 GPS, but this could also be um, any CAN GPS. So we're just doing this because of some of the sort of common stumbling blocks people find when um, you know trying to set up a, a CAN GPS. So what we've got here, we've got a cube orange here that's just been flashed with the latest copter. So at the time of making this video, it's 4.4. And in order to start using the GPS, um, it's also got a built-in compass. And um, we must enable some parameters first. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust those settings, then we'll power cycle it, and then we'll connect up the here 4. So let's make some parameter adjustments first. So let's connect the USB cable and wait for the device to boot up. Like I say, this has already got a copter firmware on. So I know that we're gonna to have to first of all enable CAN, because by default, it won't be enabled. So we're seeing here the cube and the Mavlink. So we'll connect to the cube and then we'll navigate to the uh, full parameters list. So configuration, full parameter list, and I know that we have to enable some CAN settings. So let's have a look on here. I'm just going to type in CAN. And then we're going to change our drivers here. So the CAN P1 and P2 drivers. So this is just um, enabling the, the CAN ports on the cube. So let's change them to both to one. That would allow us to use any CAN port. Then we must write these parameters. Um, we also need to do something to enable the LEDs on this particular GPS because it, it uses a different type of LED. So we need to search for NFT, NTF, sorry. And then we're going to change um, this LED type here, which by default is normally drone cam. So that's now enabled. So we've enabled drone cam. And we're going to write the parameters. And what we'll do is we'll also tell it that the GPS type is going to be CAN. So we're going to say GPS1 type is CAN. So I'm just going to search for GPS. And then I'm going to navigate down until I find GPS1. Here we go, GPS underscore type. And for the first one, so you'll see we've got a two here. So by default, it's set to auto detect, but I know that that won't work for a drone CAN GPS. So if we look at the options here, nine is drone CAN. So I'm gonna select it, change it to nine, 
I like to tap out of the box and then press right parameters. So we don't, we don't have it connected, um, so we'll do a reboot, but at the moment we're seeing no GPS. So I'm gonna disconnect, we'll unwire. So I do not advise anybody to connect the GPS while you're powered on. Um, then for the here four, we're gonna connect it to CAN1 and we'll reapply the USB. And in this case, this is sufficient enough to power um, the GPS um, for the purposes of setup. On the here four, what we'll see is initially, we're gonna get all the colors of the LEDs. So it goes for this sort of rainbow effect. Now a few things happen. We've, we've now just gone straight to yellow. So I know that's a good sign. We did briefly see a blue and red flashing. That's a calibration stage of the cube but yellow means it's looking for GPS. And because it's still not showing the rainbow pattern, that means it has been picked up as a CAN device. So if you did the steps I've done and you were seeing a rainbow pattern, it, it hasn't actually um, connected as a CAN device. So you might not have saved the parameters. So back on our screen here, I'm gonna connect again to the Mavlink. And to know if we now have a GPS connected, what we see is no fix. So this doesn't say no GPS, so it knows there's a GPS, but we're at a stage that we don't have a fix. So this is a really good um, bit of information here to tell if you actually have a GPS connected or not. The only way to now change this to a fix, we need to go outside. <laughs> um, so if you're seeing no fix, it thinks it has a GPS, but you, you're not receiving a sufficient enough signal to give you a position. So that, that's good. So we, we have seen it. Um, the other way, um, what I can have a look on here is look at our hardware. And we should also now see the CAN compass. So I can see on our hardware list, we've got a couple of CAN devices. So it's picking up the built-in barrow. So there's a barrow that's been on CAN. And here's a compass. Also, if I had a look at the compass menu, there we go. We've got a compass now connected via UAV CAN. So that is the compass inside of the HERE4. Now the HERE4 has an RM3100 compass. That's you know pretty much the best compass on the market. So this absolutely should be the number one compass. So my steps to do now would always be to bump that up to the top. And in this case, we're now seeing two compasses, one's inside the cube, so I'd remove the third one. And as soon as I go to navigate away from here, it will prompt me that a reboot is needed. So any changes made to compass priority and ordering um, a reboot must happen before that takes place. So you would not calibrate this now. Um, it must have a reboot and obviously your, your compass should be hard being permanently mounted. We have got the LEDs working and we have got the compass working and we've got the GPS working, but in order to see our position, we must go and stand outside for a minute or two. One of the things that um, people misunderstand, I don't always realize, devices like the HERE4 and also other CAN devices such as CAN airspeed sensors, they're running a stripped down version of RD Pilot called AP Perif, so RD Pilot Peripheral. And that in itself has additional settings. So we previously picked up a compass and a barrow that were connected via CAN. But let's say you wanted to dis disable that or you wanted to disable the LEDs. That can be done within the AP Perif settings. So if we navigate over to optional hardware, so setup, optional hardware, and then we're gonna see a drone CAN page. Um, so you should be on the latest version of Mission Planner if you're not seeing these um, menu items. We can now access CAN devices um, over Mavlink directly. You can also access them via Mavlink over a radio, um, and there is a, a USB pass-through method. So for the purpose of this, we'll use Mavlink CAN1, and I'm choosing that because we're connected over Mavlink and where the device is plugged into CAN1. So we should pick up a couple of items here. The first ones we'll see, 127 is actually Mission Planner, 10 is the cube, and this 125 is um, the HERE4. So there we go, HERE4. From this page here, we can do stuff like update the firmware on the, cube, on the um, HERE4, and we can also view and adjust any parameters. So if I click parameters here, it brings up a parameter list like, that might look like the parameters of a cube, but these are actually only parameters for the GPS. So it's a much shorter list of maybe 100 items compared to the eight, 900 or 1,000 items on the cube settings. So straight away we can see barrow enable. So this would be the way 
to disable a barrow. It would also be a way to hard set a node ID, to change any board rates, disable a compass, um, and disable a GPS if you want to use it just to compass. So these are settings purely for um, the here for. You'll also find if you have any other CAN devices like airspeed sensors, you'll have a similar set of parameters depending on what device it is as to what you can adjust. But for the, for the here for, some users may want to disable a barrow, some users may want to disable a compass for whatever reason, but it's just to make people aware that um, these latest peripherals are running a stripped down version of Audio Pilot called AP Perif, which gives loads of new features, but it also has some settings that might appear a little bit hidden at first look, but this is how we find them. So we're talking to the AP Perif through this drone CAN menu, and we've connected via Mavlink to CAN 1, and from here we can update the device but also view and change parameters. So that's a quick overview of AP Perif running on devices like the HEAR 4. So again, massive thank you to Ben for taking the time to take us through that. Hopefully for those of you that was asking about how do you configure a HEAR 4 with a Cube Pilot and Mission Planner, that answers the question. The setup is pretty much identical with everything else, apart from you also have the ability to connect to it via AP Perif and configure it to work in the way that you want. This is something that we're going to see more and more as more smart sensors come around that enable you to configure how they operate. Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful, then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.